Thank you for your continued support in this teaching, and may the Lord bless you and give you more wisdom through Christ our Lord. This is the last video and the conclusion of this series, Jewish Christian Connection. In our past studies, we discovered that Adam had failed God miserably for surrendering the kingdom to the serpent. This was also true to Abraham's descendants when they gave up the kingdom to their enemies. Jesus came to take the kingdom back unto himself and share it with his followers everywhere. He had given the keys of the kingdom of heaven to all who are willing to repent, receive new spirit, and abandon the old kingdom of darkness. Jesus was born of Jewish parents who followed Jewish law. He grew up in Nazareth under Roman occupation and was fully immersed in Jewish culture, traditions, and nationality. He practiced the religion of first century Judaism. He grew up learning the Old Testament and following its precepts, obeying the Mosaic laws, all its commandments, ordinances, and the feasts of the Lord. When he started his ministries, he and his disciples observed the Passover, Pentecost, Tabernacle, Hanukkah, and attended worship services and taught in synagogues. He advised others to observe the law of Moses and offer sacrifices. He also promoted respect for the law as it was being taught by the scribes and parishes of his days. So on top of this, we are told in the Bible to follow the footsteps of Jesus, John 10, 27, and be sure that you are following the true and real Jesus. The life, death, and resurrection of Jesus brought an end to the old Abrahamic covenant. Remember that the old covenant was an exclusive agreement between God and the nation of Israel. Gentiles were not part of it. The covenant stipulated that God would be the God of Israel, while Israel is God's people. Parts of the covenant are land and seed, Genesis 12, 1-3, and they will be a great nation, a blessing to all, and God shall establish an eternal kingdom through them. Though the kingdom had been established, but it collapsed afterwards, similar to the failure at the Garden of Eden. When Jesus came, He instituted a new covenant ending the old covenant as He began to establish the kingdom of God. The new covenant that Jesus asserted is inclusive, open to all people, Jews and Gentiles, who are willing to accept Him as Lord and Savior. Both Jews and Gentiles will join Him together to establish the kingdom of heaven on earth, and this was the first connection that happened in the lives of Gentile believers. In time of Christ, many people in Israel were looking for a political and cultural Savior, not a Savior from sin. They wanted to make Jesus King to throw off the yoke of Rome and establish Jerusalem as the capital of the world. Acts chapter 1 verse 6 but this concept was not in the mind of Christ the first time He appeared. His kingdom is not of this world. His kingdom is not from here. His concern was to establish the kingdom of God in the hearts of men, where the Lord reigns through the Spirit of God. When the apostles began to preach after the ascension of Christ, they stopped preaching the kingdom of God. Rather, they preached the name of Jesus. They understood that Jesus is the embodiment of the kingdom of God. The Jesus who taught them in Galilee, crucified at Golgotha, is the same risen Lord of the entire universe. The kingdom would not be inaugurated with spectacle or splendor, with no great person who stake out a territorial claim, but the kingdom would come silently and unseen inside of us. God rules in the hearts of some people, and the King Himself is within us. In reality, when a person accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, regardless of race, nationality, sexuality, color, education, and status in life, the Spirit of Christ is within that person's heart. The King has come, and the Kingdom of God has been established in the life of a person. Therefore, the Kingdom of God is within our reach as we continue to follow the command of Jesus Christ. This is another evidence of our connection with the Jewish community. As we read the Gospels and Acts, it is noticeable that Jesus and His disciples were obedient and respectful of the feast of Israel. His parents were obedient Jews to the law of Moses, and every year the family went to Jerusalem for the feast of Passover. 
Jesus and his disciples continue to celebrate with his people. These feasts are God's feasts that he introduced to the Israelites in ancient time to be celebrated every year. You can review this study about feasts on the second video in this series. They have a spiritual meaning in the lives of Messiah and a shadow of a good things to come. The Bible writers put them in their writings that the people in the future generations, especially the Christians, will continue to celebrate them, but in a different lens. Jesus must be the object and center of the peace, not the animals or other celebrations. The peace of Passover or Pascha in Greek had been fulfilled by Jesus when he was killed and offered at the cross as the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. In his conversation with Nicodemus in John chapter 3, using the illustrations of Israel's experience with the snake in the wilderness, he said, As Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, and whoever puts his trust in him will have life that lasts forever. John chapter 3 verse 5. Passover was fulfilled at the cross when Jesus was crucified. And we, the believers, who look up unto himself, are the first beneficiaries of this fulfillment. The next feast that was fulfilled in time of Jesus was the Feast of Pentecost, means 50. And this feast is also called Feast of Harvest. The Israelites shall count seven weeks or 50 days from Passover, then celebrate the Feast of Pentecost to honor the Lord as a gratitude for a good harvest. Harvest in the kingdom of God means harvest of souls, the new believers in Christ Jesus. In one occasion, Jesus said to his disciples that the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Matthew 9.37 Fifty days after the resurrection of Jesus, the Holy Spirit descended to the believers in Jerusalem. They were baptized with the Holy Spirit and spoke in other languages. This is the manifestation of empowerment, and that the kingdom of God will be brought by the believers of Jesus to all nations, villages, languages, and tribes on earth. The book of Acts tells that the apostles of Jesus moved from one place to another, introducing the name of Jesus to all. People began to listen, believe, and accept Christ as their Lord and Savior. And for the next 2,000 years, people in all generations continue to accept Christ as Lord and Savior. You will be benefited with this fulfillment if you will accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. And after doing that, you are now connected with the Jewish people through Jesus Christ. The last feast is the Feast of Tabernacles, with three feasts involved. The Feast of Trumpet, the Day of Atonement, and the Feast of Tabernacles. In biblical period, the Feast of Trumpet is celebrated on the first day of the month of Tishri, seventh month of Hebrew calendar. Then after ten days is the Day of Atonement, and then after another five days is the Feast of Tabernacles. This feast will be fulfilled on the second coming of Jesus Christ. Jesus will return to dwell with his people bodily, to reign and set up the kingdom of God literally that shall never be destroyed. All prophecies will be completed. All believers in Christ will be rewarded, while all enemies of the kingdom of God will be judged by Jesus. Please watch out for my next teaching, the second coming of Christ. When Jesus returns, people will hear the sound of the archangel and the trumpet of God. It is no coincidence that on the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem, the multitude of angels celebrated his birth praising the good Lord. On his second coming, Jesus will send his angels with a great sound of trumpets, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Matthew 24, 31. Apostle Paul wrote that upon the return of Jesus, the trumpet will sound, and the dead in Christ will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. 1 Corinthians 15.52 In the book of Revelations, John saw the angels blowing the trumpet before the coming of Christ. Revelation 8 The return of Jesus is not only to establish the eternal kingdom of God on earth, but to judge both the living and the dead. King Solomon said that God will bring every work in judgment, including every secret things, whether good or evil. Ecclesiastes 12.14 Paul wrote that the believers shall stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Romans 14.10 The purpose of Christ for judging all Christians is not to assess or evaluate whether they are saved or not. 
but to give out rewards. In fact, everyone who gives a cup of cold water to his brethren will not lose his reward. In other words, all good works that we do for the Lord will receive corresponding rewards, while all confessions were erased. Before we accept Christ, we are Gentiles and sinners by nature. Our religious acts, idol worship, memorized prayers, and all religious sacrifices were unacceptable to God. Paul compares the Gentiles to the wild olive tree, while the Jewish people to the natural olive tree. The natural branches that represents Israel were broken off because of their unbelief, while the wild branches that represents Gentile believers were grafted in because of their faith to Jesus. Romans 9.17 The Gentiles have been made partakers of the promises and inherited the blessings of God's salvation original promise to Abraham in Genesis 12. Gentiles were grafted in that they may be able to produce acceptable fruits to God. Apart from Christ, all religious efforts of the Gentile world will be failed. It was only through Jesus Christ that the offering of the Gentiles became adequate and pleasing to God, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Romans 15.16 Now, the Gentile believers had been connected with the covenant of promise through Christ our Lord. What about the Israelites, the Jewish people? The prophet Jeremiah declared that if the sun stops giving its light on the day, and the moon and stars stops giving lights during the night, if these laws of nature change, then the children of Israel will stop being a nation before God forever. And if someone can find out how wide the heavens are and look through the deepest places of the earth, then God will send the children of Israel away from Him because of all their evil deeds. Jeremiah 31, 35 to 37. This prophetic message tells us that God will never change His position for the Israelites to be His chosen people. His covenant with Abraham is perpetual despite the sins they had committed. God loves Israel with an everlasting love. Some Christian denominations are teaching that the church is God's replacement for Israel and the promises made to Israel in the Bible are fulfilled in the Christian church, not in Israel. They believe that the prophecies in Scripture concerning the blessing and restoration were done in the past, and since the Jewish people had rejected Jesus as Messiah, they had forfeited the blessings and were given to the Christian church. Question, is this view correct and biblical? Our answer is very wrong theology. If Israel has been abandoned by God and there is no future for the Jewish nation, how do we explain the supernatural survival of the Jews over the past 2,000 years despite the many attempts to destroy them? And how do we understand the revert of the nation of Israel on May 14, 1948, and their continued success until today despite the efforts of their surrounding enemies to annihilate them? Are they not confirmation that Israel remains God's people? That God has not abandoned the descendants of Abraham? It is true that they have suffered in the past, but they were also blessed and restored recently. But these facts are also true to the Gentile world. They had suffered and been blessed as well. For more about the Jews and Promised Land, please watch for my teaching videos, Holy Land series. The ancient prophet said that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. I will put my law in their minds and will write it in their hearts, and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Jeremiah 31 It is very clear that the new covenant was intended for Israel and Judah. Yet this one is not exclusive because it has been extended by Jesus to the Gentile world on his appearance. So. There are now two important groups of people to God, the Jews and the Christians. Remember that God has not abandoned the Jews, and God is able to graft them back in unto His fold, the same way He has done to Gentiles, bringing them into the new covenant. As Paul said to the brethren, God has made the Jews and non-Jews one people. God broke down the wall that divided them through Christ's death on the cross. God made the two groups of people one new kind of people like Himself, 
Jesus brought the two groups together to God, finished the differences between them by his death on the cross. Ephesians chapter 2, 15 to 16. Jews and Gentiles united and one in Messiah. This fact may not be accepted by others, but this is the best way of understanding the Jewish scripture. Finally, the Gentiles' connection with the Jews is overwhelming. The promised blessing to the nations through Abraham had been fulfilled when the Gentiles accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. The concept of covenant with God was originally Jewish, and the animal sacrifices was introduced by the God of Israel to all. There is only one Bible, Old and New Testament, shared both by Jews and Christians. They were written by the prophets of Jews and Christians, mostly Jews except Luke. The Lord's Prayer, or Our Father, was taught by Jesus to all people in basically Jewish way of uttering the prayers to God. The celebration of Easter or Holy Week is Jewish feast of Passover, not an idea of the Gentile Christians. Lamb is important for sacrifice and offering, and we have Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, our Passover. The return of Jesus is a Jewish belief from the prophetic perspective, and both of us, Jews and Gentiles, are waiting for the appearance of the Messiah and the final consummation of the ages. Are you blessed that you are now connected with God's people, not only of the present day but also with the ancient people of God like Abraham, Moses, David, Isaiah, Hezekiah, Jeremiah, Paul, Peter, John, Mary, and most of all, our Jewish Messiah, Jesus Christ. Our goal now is to continue the Great Commission, at the same time to bless the Jews and the nation of Israel. After all, the promise is faithful and true. I will bless those who bless you. Paul said that since the Gentile Christians receive blessings of the gospel from the believers in Jerusalem, it is their duty to bless the Jews back in material things. And one way of doing this is educational pilgrimage, which I am doing for the past 20 years. And if you are interested, please write your comments on this video. Thank you so much for being here. I am so blessed for your wonderful support. If you have any questions and comments, please do write and I would be glad to reply your queries. I hope you began to see new things in your lives and in your relationship with Jesus Christ. Please subscribe, like all my videos, and share them with others. Thank you and God bless.